So, what is this week's exercise? I'm excited you asked. This week's exercise is painting. I'm going to make you all artists. I'm gonna make you artiste. But, <laughs> Seiji, you're a little bit in the way. But I want it to be easy. And why is that? Because when I was a youth leader back in the day, what uh, my kind of leader mentor told me was, you have to have early wins. Oh man, this guy's got bugs on him. When you're starting out in something, you have to have an early win. It has to be easy to succeed early. And I totally believe in that. I believe in hardship, I believe in challenge, I believe in working hard. But if you're gonna introduce somebody to something, let them get in in a way that's gonna feel good right away. Build some momentum sort of thing. So that's the idea. I'm gonna make you an artist. I'm gonna make you make a painting, but you can do it. I believe in you, because here's how it goes. You get a single sheet of paper, piece of uh, printer paper, computer paper, we'll be fine. Look at that guy, he wants to hang out with those people. You get your piece of paper, and then you get some paints, any kind of paint, acrylic paint, if you have oil paint somehow, um, watercolor you have, I think I might use. He is now made it across the lake. Look at that guy. Come on, boy. Is he going on the bridge? Come on, buddy. Good boy, Seiji. So, here's what you do. You got your piece of paper. You got your paints. Now all you have to do is paint the piece of paper one color. And so this is my idea I had a long time ago. Why is drawing intimidating? Why is painting intimidating? And I think it's intimidating because of the number of decisions that you have to make. If I was gonna paint this portrait right here of myself by these trees, you know, you gotta pick skin color, you gotta pick beard color, shirt color, and then even within the beard, it's like a thousand little strokes in a thousand little different colors. And each one of those strokes, each one of those brush strokes is a decision, it's a choice. And so the end result is 10 hours of 10,000 little decisions. And that's very intimidating to a lot of people, which I understand. So in this exercise, all you have to do is make one decision. What color should I paint this piece of paper? and then you paint the entire piece of paper that color. Basically, as smooth as possible. Now, if it naturally has some little, you know, variations, that's fine, but you're not even trying to make art with the texture of the color. Just pick a color and paint the whole piece of paper that color. So not that hard, you can do it in a second. A couple of constraints. One, you can't use any of the colors out the tube, as we say. If you have five colors of paint, you can't just squirt yellow on there because I like yellow and do it. You have to mix. You have to do some mixing. Mix yellow with blue. Even if it's yellow with like the tiniest amount of blue. As long as it's technically not straight out the tube or in watercolors, you know, any any one of your little, you know, dishes of color, then it's fine. So you have to do some mixing because the point is we're learning to hear our emanating voice. And so how do you know what color to choose? Really the challenge here is I want you to choose a color that you love because I'm going to have you hang this up on the wall. You have to look at it and you have to love it. So this is a piece of art that you will make that you have to love. Now that's the only constraint. I tell people that um, I've been an artist, painter, drawler for 20 years or whatever, but I've really only liked any art that I've made in the last three years. And it's basically because of some of these exercises of being able to listen to myself on a very visceral way, to listen to what I call the emanating voice inside of me, the emanating voice inside of you. The challenge is discovering which color it is that you're gonna love. And so what I want you to do is take these colors, like the flower, and present them to yourself one at a time. Now you don't actually have to hold the thing up to you to query the emanating voice. You know, you can just look at one. If you have a tray of colors, you look at the purple, you look at the green, but do the same sort of thing. <sighs> Relax yourself, present it to yourself. You know, like I even like to kind of, I keep doing this, of bringing it in. You know, you could do this, boom, you open your eyes, you know, kind of, make a ceremony of presenting it to yourself. So you got your colors, cover up everyone but the purple, and then look down at it, relaxed, and just let it come to you, and then pay attention to how, do you, how you react. You may even have some narrative of like, oh, I like purple, I don't like orange, this and that. Don't pay attention to that, those aren't important right now. The only thing that matters is nothing in the mind, nothing in tech, intellectual, nothing linear, nothing language, nothing linguistic. The only thing that matters is the physical reaction that we're paying attention to. What do we taste? What do our muscles feel like? Do we lean forward? Do we lean back? Do we cross our arms? Do we open our chest? These sort of kinesthetic responses. So 
Present the purple to yourself and let your body respond to it. Present the green and let your body respond to it. And pay attention. And after you do these one after the other, hopefully at some point you can almost be able to compare them. You can almost be able to say, well, the purple was like a four. The orange was like a six. And the red probably was a six and a half, which was like the strongest reaction that I got. And so this is how you start to work toward what color we're going to choose. And then I want you to mix these suckers. And as you're mixing, again, we're querying. So you're, you're mixing red and blue and you're making, you're making a purple. You're mixing and you don't just say, oh, I'm going for purple. I'm going for that purple from the school that I went to or that sign that I saw, saw down the road. We're not going for anything. This is too much in the mind. Let it come together and react to it. Just, you feel like, ah, it's purple, but it's, it's too sharp for me. If it was, if it was, if it was less abrasive, um, maybe I'll add some, some more blue, make it deeper. Maybe I'm, I'll add some brown to temper it down so it's just not so vibrant. Oh, it's a, it's kind of a weaker purple now. I kind of like that more. Maybe my energy today is a little forward and having a weak color pairs, pairs well with that. So that's what we're trying to do here is you're working with the color and you're reacting to it. Once it feels like, oh, I like this, start painting your paper with it. Hopefully you see it on there and you're like, oh, this feels good. This is soothing. I mean, let me pick out a Frisbee that I like the most. I don't like this one. <laughs> I do like this one. So if I had to stare at both of these, which one do I like? This one's just way too vibrant. It's too noisy. I mean, I kind of like it in the practice of Frisbee golf because I can find it. But if I'm gonna have to stare at a color for a while, I'd much more have this, which maybe you'll roll your eyes. It's just tie-dye, you hippie. But the thing is, I like tie-dye and I am a hippie, but that's fine. The point of the emanating voice is not to be original. It's not to be impressive. It's not to be correct. It's not any of those things. It just is what it is. I didn't choose to like tie-dye. I just like it. <laughs> I mean, the multiple colors. You know, I, I, I like all flavors of ice cream at different times. I mean, maybe not mint, but I don't just pick one and stick with it forever. I like to get a different one every, every time that I go. I like bright colors. It just, it is what it is. This guy, too harsh. So that sort of thing is as you're painting this, it should feel good. You know, as I look at this, it just puts me in a good mood. You know, when I listen to talk radio on modern politics, it just makes me feel bad. It's a dead space. They're all, they're all just pointing out the hypocrisy in the other. But the truth is, finding hypocrisy is uninspiring because it's everywhere. It's like writing a news article. I found air at the park today. Holy mother, I found air. Yeah, there's air everywhere, buddy. So just nitpicking on other people it just makes me feel bad inside. But if I just looked at this, if I just sat outside in the trees and just looked at this, to me, it feels like opening up. It feels like I'm able to release a little bit. Back to that idea of a clenched fist. What this feels like, liking this Frisbee to me, what it feels like is that I can kind of Oh, I can finally open up a little bit. This is a room on which I can let down. I can take my shoes off in this room of staring at this. So that's the feeling that you want. If you're painting and you got the feeling that I get looking at this of like, oh my God, when is this over? I don't want to look at this anymore. You're on the wrong track. You need to try a different color. Try a totally different color. Try to modify the color you're on just a little bit. So this is how we make the painting. Up next is what we do with it. That'll be the next video.